This episode of Nuff Said is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. What is the sound of one hand clapping? What is the sound of one fist punching? What is the sound of the Iron Cast? Cast of Kunlun, the past of the Iron Cast. I am your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser. And with me, as always, is my skinny rich friend. That's Mars. That's the guy. I love him. He's awesome. I love you too, Charlie. Uh, anyway, tonight's episode, The Dragon. Dies at Dawn, Season 2 to Episode 6, Misty and Colleen's trip to the tattoo parlor turned painful, and mm. not for them, as <laughs> crosses, off, crosses names off his lips, narrates Danny and Arthur. Our director tonight is Philip Johns, um, <clears throat> Roy Thomas, Gil Kane, of course, get our Marvel credits, and then we have got Scott Buck. Uh, the creator of the show, uh, written by, goes to Matthew White. Uh, Matthew White is also our executive story editor, and Tatiana Suarez Pico is also an executive story editor, and Jenny Lynn, why, she's just a regular story editor. Okay, uh, so we open up tonight. Uh, we ended off last night, uh, after I woke up. Uh, <laughs> After Miles woke me up. Um, although, I will say this. We do find that knockout drug this one. So, I was just maybe getting ahead of myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, so, we open up this, uh, this episode after, um, after Mary and, uh, or, sorry, Walker and Joy have gotten caught by Misty. And we have Misty essentially lecturing them. Uh, berating them, interrogating them. Yeah, you know, as you do. And uh, they are actually remarkably forthcoming. So that's the good news. It's an interesting situation. Like, uh, she is caught and she wants to get out of it. And she has no allegiances to anything but getting out of the situation, right? Yeah. And, of course, you know, we know that Walker really has, you know, only limited uh, limited ties to anyone. She is, she is very much... Uh, very much the um, the mercenary, you know. Mm, mm. She's there for the job, you know. Um, which is uh, which is you know I think a, a, a nice uh, a nice way to be for her character. You know, Danny is still recovering, uh, and honestly, in all things being equal, uh, Danny's like recovery just you know, I mean he's got for not having the Iron Fist anymore, he's got to be still be rocking some kind of healing factor between what happened to him last episode what happens to him this episode and next yeah you know and yeah you know the guy's just really uh you know i mean i guess it's you know your classic superhero trope or even just any action film trope that you know you <clears throat> just wipe the uh wipe the tar off your face and you're fine you know um i don't know if you ever Ever saw the last last action hero? There's this scene where um, I loved that movie when I was a little kid. That's with Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie, right? The, uh, car into the Labrea tar pit, mm. and then you see him coming out, and he's all covered in tar, and then he takes out a wet nap, and by three seconds later, all the all the tar is off. It's you know that, that's how it works in the movies. Um, uh, although in that case, they were highlighting you know that because it was a sports movie. And Right, indeed. Anyway, um, they sort of uh, re- they figure they figured out that they need to get the uh, get the bowl, and they need to get the tattoos to put the iron fist back on uh, back into Danny. Now, you know, there's a quality to this that you know that they are establishing this idea that oh, this is what we're gonna do, but. I don't know, there's a very real part of me that just does not think that that's how they're going to get the Iron Fist back into Danny. You know? Right. I really don't think, I think that that's this whole excursion, and a logical excursion as it might be, 
is kind of a MacGuffin. And I think there's a quality of it that always makes me ask, like, why why do they want to give... Why do they... Why does Danny... I mean, I guess I understand why Danny wants the Iron Fist back, but... Right. I mean, is getting the Iron Fist back, should that be a priority for anybody? Shouldn't the priority be, let's get Davos off the street? Right. Because he is straight up murdering lots of people. It's true. Now, but here's the interesting thing about Davos. Isn't how is he different than the Punisher? Um, you know, because like aside from the obvious, you know, he's got two glowing fists. Which, by the way, is another interesting question. Like, did he already have one fist and now he got the other one, or like, you know, because when they transfer and and in any scenes, I didn't pay attention to it until I just thought of it right now. Is one hand red and one hand yellow, or are both of Davos's hand reds? Both of his hands are red. Huh. Um, and I take that to mean much like. So here's the quality. I feel like the iron, because as as I've said, he did not. He hmm. did not. Uh, take, he did not earn the Iron Fist. Right. You know, he has taken the Iron Fist. But in taking the Iron Fist, he's not actually, he is not, because just to, just to give the backstory on it, you don't actually just get the Iron Fist. Hmm. You actually fight for the right to face Shao Lao. And Shao, and after you defeat Shao Lao the Undying, hmm. that's how you get the Iron Fist. Because you Push your fist through his molten heart. Mm. And mm. that's how you get the Iron Fist. And that's how you, that is how, how you gain the power of Shao Lao the Undying. Mm. Um, this was established in the first season. Um, right. But here's the other thing. You raise an interesting question. Why do we need the Iron Fist back in Danny? Maybe, you know, let's give him a shot. Let's see after he kills all the bad guys. See if we can maintain some sort of order in in Hell's Kitchen, you know. Well, I mean, uh, well, first off, because Misty's not going to stand for that, um, right? You know, well, she, just, she, yeah, just I mean, she's not she's barely tolerating uh, Luke Cage uptown. Uh, right. She is right. Not gonna let this guy go. That, yeah, but like, like we have a Punisher also, and he's doing the same exact thing, you know, and like and the cops are after him. Well, that's true. You that's know, true. It's like, it's against him. No, no, no. Well, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. The cops maybe should be after him, but like you know, um, maybe let him try out the Iron Fist for a while. I don't know. Oh, and and not for nothing. I don't think we get it. we don't get it this episode. Do we no. Get this episode. What? Where he uh, does get where, where he you? I think it's next episode. The recruiting. The two meth heads. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's next. That's but yeah, uh, uh, well, yeah, yeah, and and I guess we'll get to my thoughts on that scene when we get to it. Yeah. But you know, but the idea is is that this 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 urge that basically you know there's a quality of superhumanity, mm. which I think is what the whole point of why Danny was chosen and not Davos mm. is that you know. It's not that, it's not that, um, the good, good people get, or it's like, essentially the difference between a hero and a villain isn't, um, isn't anything, isn't the powers, that they are a hero or they are a villain long before they get the power. Right. And the reality was, and Davos made this mention a few episodes back, who was talking about when people were thrown off of the rocks for lying, which is like, whoa, Cunlan mm. is a pretty messed up town. <laughs> start with that. Cunlan is a messed up town. And then Davos would go down there and step on the throats of those right. who died. So right there, you know, <laughs> Davos is, is not a good man. Mm. You know, and for what it's worth, for all of the darkness that the Punisher may have done mm. before he became the Punisher, it was never an act of cruelty. Right, that's true. It that is true. It was never an act of, of, of uh, it was never trying to cross this line into violence or, or, um, 
or, or did, taking delight in it. It was his, right. His violence was strictly utilitarian. Exactly. Whereas Davos, in his moral authority, wants to say, "I have the right to commit atrocities." Right. And of course, we all know that people who demand the right to uh, <laughs> commit uh-huh. atrocities because they're so certain of how uh, right they are are often not right. Right. You know, um, but, um, you know, um, it's funny, you know, I, I watched this episode a couple of times and I kept on falling asleep during it. So I actually mm-hmm. missed a lot of the fighting in it. <laughs> I, 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 you know, because it is a very talky episode. Yeah. And there's a lot of, which is good, which is good when you think about it, because it's good that everyone has these conversations and gets to really play out who they are and what they want to be. Um, right. And what they believe. Um, you know, I liked, uh, I liked Joy and Ward's conversation. Yeah. Because I really, I really like Joy. I'm still... Yeah, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Well, I mean, because she's definitely the smartest person in the room. Mm. But I do feel like she has a hard time figuring out what she wants. It's like it, it's like she 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 is going to be evil essentially, but she also doesn't know. It, it's like she's you know, it's like she's trying to be a supervillain the way that every so often a supervillain tries to be a superhero. Right, you know, like right, 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 right. Doctor Doom's going to try to be a good guy, while Doctor Octopus is going to try to be a good guy, and they know what a hero is supposed to do. They know how to look like a hero. But there's mm-hmm. a quality of their personage that just doesn't translate into that heroism. I think Roy right. is very much like that, but the opposite. It's like she wants to be she wants to be the diabolical supervillain. She wants to be, you know, plotting ten steps ahead and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Be this cold, heartless uh, killer, but it's just not who she is. Right. You know what I mean? But I, I, th- I think... Sorry, I, I lost my point. I... Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's that's the that's the crux. Of that. Yeah. So that yeah. So what I was trying to get to is it's an interesting corner they've painted this character into. Mm-hmm. It's a hard thing to justify everything that she's done, and then to cause her to make this turn, and maybe they just haven't given it yet, like some sort of you know, emotional moment that justifies her bringing herself back into the fold or, or something that makes the normalcy with which everything is happening is sort of palatable, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, we very much get in this, the idea that, you know, she went after Danny because she couldn't bear to actually go after Ward. Yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't ring true any of it. Like it seems everybody's way too casual about it and then they have no choice but to be because they've written it that way, but you know, but I, I think the reaction and, 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 uh, the emotional things that she should would be going through, I think would be more pronounced. Hmm. Well, you know, there's also the argument that maybe, maybe she, it's not that she's a villain, but maybe she's a sociopath. Like she doesn't have the emotional connections that she feels she's supposed to. Huh. So it's very hard for her to actually go beyond just, you know, her surface read of things, but she still knows what she's, how well, she still knows what the proper reactions are in those situations. Uh, and, uh. Um, I mean, there, there's a lots of ways you, there's, there's always a lot, a lot of ways you can, you can break it down and, and look at it. But I, I don't know. I, I enjoy I enjoy Joy, and I've always enjoyed Joy. Ever since she first, you know... Yeah, she, I thought she was a great character in the first season. Yeah, in this one, it's it's hard for me to wrap my head around how to, you know, absorb that character, you know? Well, like I said, even then, she was kind of a villain. Because she, you know, like I said, she kept drugged water in her office. Right, right. But... Such an emergency. Yeah, but that version of her I bought. For some reason, it seemed like that's what that person would do. What they have her do in this uh, situation, what she did to Danny, just seems so over the top. I didn't see a good justification for her. They didn't paint enough of a picture of her misery to justify what she did. And 
now they're trying to make her have this arc where she redeems herself, but it never rang true in the first place, and her redemption doesn't ring true either. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I, 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 I can absolutely understand that. Um, the, the, you know, yeah. yeah. But, um, I'm trying to think, does, does Misty go to the auction house in this one, or is that... Or is that no, that's in, that's in the next one, that's in the next so this is So this episode is... We go meet the Crane sisters. Right, right. And, uh, you know, the Crane sisters are an interesting group. Um, mm. And, you know, and, and for what it's worth, you know, I'm sure there's lots of very hipstery tattoo parlors that do this kind of, you know, unique work, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I was Davos that I would have trusted them, but what are you going to do? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, they must have some sort of history or something. They must be known on the underground to have some connections to the ancient ways or something. Um, I doubt he just went to random tattoo parlor and said, hey, ladies, would you like to do this, you know? Well, I mean, obviously they're the best, they're very skilled at this specific kind of art that is mm-hmm. basically pres- prescribed by the ritual. But the ritual is, you know, you do the uh, the the ink uh, thing, you know, where you do the you, you just stick the pins dot by dot by dot, and yeah. not for nothing. If we, if we want to be really honest here, that tattoo, that is like a four week tattoo. If you're getting it, <laughs> you know, you're the whole back in like okay, in fifteen minutes. You know, Although it was just one color, I could see a couple hours in getting that done. Yeah, but it didn't. I mean, it'd be rough though. But, uh, right? No, it didn't. Yeah. You know, it seemed very much like, ah, oh, yeah, that was that was rapid. Um, yeah, yeah, but m- monks probably have certain powers to, like, you know, drain the blood from their skin or, or from the top portion or something as they're getting the work done. I don't know. Well, I, well I'm just talking about the actual physicality of the work. I mean, I guess maybe that's R- why they have the three. The three mm-hmm. pictures and each one's doing it. Oh, that's fair, yeah. Yeah, so maybe that's how that works, you know. Um, I mean, I'm just saying that was that was that was a lot of ink he got done. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. short period of time. But again, maybe that was the thing. They're really fast. They're really good and they're really fast. They're, you know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that is that that is that is that aspect of it, and this yeah. is actually, uh, actually a really nice fight scene. Although, also what winds up being kind of a disappointing fight scene for me. Hmm. Because, How so? Because Colleen, when she starts off, she's got she takes her jacket, and she's got the jacket in her hand, and, and the other and the queen sisters all got some kind of weapon. Yeah. And I thought this was going to be one of these great Jackie Chan style improvised weapon scenes. Yeah. I, I know you've seen Jackie Chan. You know, oh, he, man, I love it. You know, you, he whips it around, he pulls you, you know, flips yeah. it around. Just, I love Jackie Chan with an improvised weapon. It's just so awesome. And when I see she's got the coat, I'm just like, oh, yeah, she's going to do it. And then she just, like, throws the coat. Yeah. Really no, I mean, but, like, you know, the, the other thing is I think we take it for granted. Jackie Chan is special. There's no one like Jackie Chan. And the funny thing is, you mentioned Jackie Chan because, like, when they're trying to do this buddy cop thing between the two of them, I'm just like, hey, they're trying to do, like, a female rush hour. But, you know, if you're going to do that, really lean into that and, and make it fun. There's a reason that combination worked, you know? Yeah, yeah anyway, but that, but that was why that was a disappointing scene for me. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. But aside from that, it, it was still a good fight scene. And yeah. Nice scene, Colleen really get into embracing yeah like she was she was having a good time you know yeah yeah um and they basically beat up the 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 korean sisters yeah they agreed that okay we'll we'll give you the tattoo yeah it's almost like they're playing a video game or something you know (laughs) it it, it, it is a very untrustworthy capacity yeah. That, you know, that they're going to just say, oh, okay, now we'll do this, and, you know, all this, for, you know, and, and it's fine, yeah, we'll do that. And yeah. at some level, I guess 
guess you can say, you know, it's not like they were invested in Davos. They were, they, they seem to be like, no, he was, had a specific ritual. We did the thing. Yeah. And honestly, he was kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah, honestly, well, he is he's very creepy. <laughs> yeah. One thing we can say about Davos is he is creepy, even before this whole stuff started. He, yeah. Uh, anyway, but, um, yeah, so that's that. And ba- meanwhile, back at the dojo, um, you know, Mary and Danny are talking, and Danny still wants to talk Davos down, believes he can do this. You know, of course, mm-hmm. Ward, you know, suggests, you know, we should just sort of, you know, that. There's Have you tried a- killing him yet? Yeah. The, the, well, the, <laughs> you're not going to talk a guy like this down. No, but that, that's a good point. You know, and that's, uh, th- that I think is, is, is kind of, kind of an obvious point that, you know, everyone knows that Davos can't be reasoned with, but Danny, Danny holds out, but it's his brother, you know, and I guess yeah. that, that, that's his excuse for everything. You know, he's my brother. Um, mm. his brother's, you know, just stabbed you. And then not for nothing, you can say, well, he didn't kill him. Like, but he didn't exactly do anything to save him either. Yeah. He literally just left him to bleed out. You know, that Danny is actually alive has very little to do with anything Davos did, except that Davos didn't actively kill him. So, you know. Right. You know much like, you know, much like with, um, with Bushmaster from uh, Iron Fist, I'm not inclined mm. to, to see any kind of her- her- heroic or kindness in the end. Mm. 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 No matter how noble they may seem at certain points in the story. Yeah. You know. But, uh, so, Mary and uh, Jenny is, is basically walk out because what's Ward going to do to stop them? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> it's like, okay, Ward, you keep it. You. Hold on the floor. Yeah. And Ward's like, okay. <laughs> I have literally no ability to keep, you know, even as messed up as Danny is, Ward can't stop Danny if Danny decides. No. <laughs> and, and honestly, Ward's got a whole mess of his own problems. Mm-hmm. A whole mess of them. Oh, yeah. Um, did he visit the NA meeting yet? No, no, not yet, not yet. He is just distraught over his conversation at this point with uh, Joy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's because, you know, he... Ward is like just this puppy, and he just doesn't want to be kicked, you know? Yeah. He also will not stop going on top of the furniture, you know? Mm. It's like he he's a puppy who is tired of being, you know put upon, but also not at ever thinking that anything is his fault or that he should be, not be doing anything. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like he's always in this place where he's in a very, uh, very, uh, he's always in a place where he feels like he doesn't understand what he did was wrong, you know? Right. He's already made a justification for it in his mind. Exactly. But uh, we do get, and this is, you know, this is one of these things I thought was most interesting when we do get to Danny and Mary confrontation. Mm. And that is when you, when we go to, you know, uh, Davos's lair, one of the things that I noticed right away was that there's standing water in there. <laughs> and it made me wonder... Was that intentional on Davos that it does have that open skylight, or was it just that that was just luck? You know, he was looking for like a sparse Kunlun kind of you know cement walls kind of place to call his home, um, and it just happened to have you know Mary's one weakness, as we find out. Right, a walkers, walkers, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think he is that aware of the situation. Yeah. She only confides in that. And I think that was just a coincidence. Yeah. I mean, I do, I do think it was a coincidence, but it's just one of these things like, wow, you know, if he was a supervillain thinking six steps ahead, 
that makes it a re- that that's a really useful trait of, of it. Um, yeah, um, yeah. But we do see, and of course, this is what what I love is Mary basically saying, "Look, I'm the only person here who can who is who can catch the Iron Fist." You know, right? That she knows the kind of move she know. You know, she's been watching Danny for so long. You know, because she does make her plan. You know, she gets right. Her plan. She's Batmaning it. You know, um, and we see her totally, not for nothing. Completely uh, own uh, Davos. Yeah. You know, it's like Davos is like, oh, I am, you know, I am the Iron Fist now, yada, 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 yada. And, you know, she just, you know, whips his arm, pulls him close, jabs him in the neck. Yeah. And like the information she had going in, had it not been faulty, she would have succeeded. But relative to the information she had going in, that that was enough to stop him, enough juice in that syringe. Uh, which, you know, it clearly wasn't enough. Uh, so if she hadn't miscalculated there, no, she, she would have stopped him. him. Well, she stabbed him, but but I don't know if she stopped him, you know? Well, I mean, uh, he interrupted her injection, so Danny hmm. had to finish the injection. Yeah, but even that didn't do, do it, did no, it? He was knocked out. Huh. He was done. Had, oh, had, that's right. They did. They, yeah. Started raining. Right, right. She would have went back and... Yeah. They would have tied up Davos. You know, so they at this point, him, yeah. Kept him somewhat drugged, kept him loopy, mm. and uh, they would have, you know, re retransferred the transfer. Yeah. But um, you know, that is not what happened. Uh, yeah. Because the ring up, and you know, the whole time I'm wondering, is anyone going to get Davos? And when we get to the next episode. We figure out how that all plays out, but mm. I was very, uh, very shocked when when it all starts to go down. Where you know when Mary comes back, and you realize you really start to hate Mary in that scene. You know? Yeah. It's funny. It's like we're supposed to think, oh Walker, she's the bad personality, but now you're like, no, right. I'm getting Mary's the problem. Right. She's the coward. Yeah, Mary's. Well, not even that. She's a coward. It's just that she just. And I actually still say Mary is the. I'm actually, I I am disinclined to think that Walker is the uh, is the is the negative personality. I think that mm. Mary is the one that has, because and not for nothing, we know that Mary has the boundary issues, and you know, I think Mary is. I think Mary is much more the sociopath than uh, Walker. But that's that's my opinion, and we'll see. Yeah, that makes, I could see that. She's definitely much more isolated from other people and in her own world. Mary knows how to operate with other people better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely think so. Oh, anyway, and that is how this episode ends with Danny with his. Oh, by the way, we we kind of buried the lead on this. Gets his femur shattered by the iron fist. <laughs> Such a strange, strange thing. That, like. What I don't know. Why, why would somebody just attack? Like, such a weird thing to do. And like, I guess it serves the story in some way, but it's just. I mean, shattering is like no. That's the point. Yeah. Because it's the thing that will basically what he's doing is he's crippling Danny. And he's just because not for nothing, you know, his bone wasn't just broken. His bone was shattered. Right. You know. So, I mean, yeah. What what he what he's doing is he's saying, Danny, do not come after me again. I'm gonna make sure you can't. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know. He just, and then like I guess it would have looked cooler if he just went around and elbowed it or kneed it. It would have looked more gruesome. But the fact that he was like you know forced to use the iron fist to do it, it just kind of looked weird. I, I, yeah. that, that I don't know why, but that really really bugged me. Well, you know, I mean. And, and I get it, because obviously, first off, an actual fist isn't going to cause that kind of damage on a human. Right. You know, even even if you're a karate, karate master, that's not going to break a human fist. Yeah. You know, you'll, you'll break your hand, quite frankly, before you break your hand. <laughs> you know, the femur, that's, that is the right. main strongest bone in the human body. So we kind of had to use the iron fist there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for what it's worth, you know, like I said, it, it, it's, it's shocking... 
But I think what's more shocking is just Danny's recovery from it. Right, no, that that's just absolutely insane. Because like I said, that he basically just turned his femur to, to dust. That there's right. no that's not just a clean, you know, hairline fracture. That is that is the kind of thing that well, you know, we'll but we'll get to that next week. So uh Maz, in the meantime, before well people are all breathlessly anticipating what to watch next. How can people find you? Oh, they can reach me via email at mozmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Moz Manzor. That's M-O-Z-Z-M-A-N-Z-O-O-R. And, of course, you can always write to me in that old-fashioned email way, the way our Moz and Paws and Danny Rand did when he was a teenager. Mm-hmm. Uh, once did at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And, of course, follow me on the Twitter. This is at Live Tweet, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and uh, uh, Cloak and Dagger and uh, Gotham and all these shows, these great shows coming back once again. Uh, looking forward to it. I probably would have been live tweeting uh, The Good Place right now. Uh, also renewed, but uh, we're doing a podcast instead. So um, watch for that and follow me on the Twitters at Charlie Esser. That's C-H-A-R-L-I-E. E-S-S-E-R. With the two E's in the middle. Bing! For quality, you have walked the path of the Iron Cap. But no, it is not a path to a door. It is a road leading forever into the horizon. Or at least before we're out. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>